Hello and welcome to the Pear Blossom Press YouTube channel. My name is Lynn or LV Handcrafted and today I'm going to make an underwater scene. Um, I'm going to start off by inking up some of my fish. Uh, this is actually from Tina Smith's recent release. It's called um, Windows with a View. And in this case, the window is a porthole. So it's meant to sort of be that window, that circular window that would be on a ship. Or in this case, I guess I'm making a submarine because my scene is going to be completely underwater. And I'm just doing some really simple inking of the fish that come in this set. There's actually two uh, different fish and each of them has two layers. And I'm keeping the inking really simple. I just picked a light and a dark of um, the same color. So these are going to be very monochromatic fish. I'm not going to make anything too, too fancy or true to life. Just want to give it a little bit of dimension. And uh, But you could just as easily cut out of solid color cardstock if you wanted. I think that would be lovely too. I just like having a little bit of depth and a little bit of color variation with these fish. I am inking them with Memento ink, which is a dye-based ink. So not not always the best ink to blend with. So I and I think some colors seem to work better than others because the the pink ones that I did a moment ago seemed just fine, but these uh, greens seem to not want to move across the page. And that's generally going to happen with a dye-based ink because it, it will soak into your papers as opposed to a pigment ink that will sit on top of your paper. So pigment inks will tend to move and glide across that paper a little bit more easily than a dye-based ink, which just wants to get soaked right into the paper. So you can't see it, but I've spritzed some this is from Sukaneko. It's called Ink Potion Number no. Nine. It's an ink blending uh, spritz, and you can spritz either your paper or what I'm doing is I'm spritzing right onto my glass mat, and I'm picking it up um, as I mix the my uh, as I pick up the ink on my brush. I'll maybe dip it into a little bit of that ink blending solution. There's a lot of different ones on the market. I I happen to really like Sukaneko inks, so I just wanted to use what they've made to go along with their inks. And it works with all water-based inks. And what it does, you could probably use something like glycerin too, because all it does is just help that ink to glide across the page without diluting the saturation of that ink. So it's um, it's really great. What I have found though is that just as comparison to glycerin, glycerin is pretty thick. This seems like it's very watery. I mean, it looks almost like it, it's just water because it's crystal clear. It's um, very fluid. Um, it's, it's not thick like glycerin at all. So it could be watered down glycerin. I just don't know. Um, but it works really nicely. It does help to to smooth out your blends. And I used a bit of it with um, the blue uh, circular panel that you see there, which will be my my ocean view. Then to um, for this card, I will be using the halo light because I thought what would be cool is, imagine this is a submarine and so it's deep under ocean, which, um, is going to be dark. So in order to see anything, any of the, you know, fish life and any of the plant life out there, they need uh, some lights to shine outside the submarine. So that's kind of the, the look that I wanted to create here. Now, what I didn't realize until I started to put things together a little bit is that the halo light the aperture, you know, on the inside of it, is actually smaller than the size of the porthole. So I had to find a circular die from my stash that um, would be small enough um, th to to cover so sort of that extra space. 
and big enough to still cover the entire halo light mechanism. Now, the halo light is really easy to install because it's just this one piece. This one piece is a metal frame which has the battery holder and the button to turn it on and off. And it's really, really easy to install. You just have to glue it down. But the other thing that I really love about getting halo lights is it's a bit of a two for one because it's a variety pack. See that opening on the inside of the light? Within that space, when you buy this, there's actually two additional one lights. And so how awesome is that that Amanda designed this so that it just makes the most of the materials. And so you're going to get great value for money with this set because you get four one lights and two halo lights. So pretty, pretty awesome and nice to have that variety. And so um, once I get this all assembled, what I'm going to do is um, start to create my scene a little bit. Now, the black cardstock, um, normally I would think to put that down first and then start layering everything else on top of it but I need to still be able to cover my halo light mechanism because it is larger than the portal so to keep this scene nice and clean I don't want too much going on um, with the the rest of the card because I really want it to be about looking out and into that ocean life scene. So I want to keep everything else on this card really, really simple. And so the black layer kind of has to be my um, above or on top of the battery and the halo light mechanism. So I've already glued down my ocean layer. I've got my halo light attached. Right now, I am stamping and die cutting out the word push. Now, as it happens, the way that the um, uh, the size of the portal and the way the halo light is designed, it just so happens that the push button where I put it, it's really, it, it's kind of underneath the porthole. So I can't really stamp push right onto the porthole because I actually die cut it out of a, um, it's kind of like an embossed specialty card stock that has that sort of stamped metal uh, look to it. I thought that might make it look a little bit um, like you're part of uh, in a submarine. And so definitely can't stamp on top of that. It's already textured. Plus there's probably not enough space. So had to figure out something different for the push button. Uh, because you definitely need to have some indicator that this is a light-up card and that it's interactive and uh, what you need to do in order to make it light up because it's not totally obvious. And so I hadn't quite figured that out, so I just set all of that aside as I create my underwater scene. The um the space that I'm working with here basically is just inside that ring because I managed to find a die that, that cuts pretty on the money. It's like just enough to cover the entire mechanism, but um but I don't lose too too much of the aperture. So it pretty much maximizes how much is visible within the halo of um the light up mechanism. And so I was still able to fish uh to fit a couple of different fish and uh a small grouping of coral. And so uh that worked out pretty well. I, I managed to to fit um at least some of the elements that I wanted to create. It's, um, I thought I would maybe try to fit three fish, but I, I think it would have been a little bit too cramped in there. And I, I wanted to have, be able to see each of the fish. If I fit a third one in, I probably would have had to overlap it with one of the other ones. So I think this grouping will work and the extra fish and the extra um, coral and seaweed that I die cut, I'll just save that for another card. 
So every once in a while, I do like to bring the frame on and have a little bit of a preview of what the what the scene would look like through the actual porthole. I think it helps me to really kind of pull back a little bit and just take a look at what the overall composition would look like. And once I was happy with it, then it's just time to to um, close up this card. So I am putting down the world's best foam. This is also by Pear Blossom Press, and it's really cool. It's, it's got this unique property. If you've never worked with it before, this is unique to Pear Blossom Press foam. For the first half hour or so, it's removable. And I mean really removable. Like no effort to remove it and zero zero tearing of your cardstock. And uh, you would think that it's, it's like a lighter tack than maybe even washi tape. I mean, it's that, it's that removable. Um, but... Uh, after it's had enough time to properly kind of cure and bond, it becomes a permanent hold. So you have that initial, and I would say it's a very generous amount of time. I mean, 30 minutes is pretty long, um, definitely long enough to, to cure any oopsies. If you uh, put things in the wrong spot or something wasn't the right size and you had to pull it up again, um, definitely enough time to, to move it around, get it where you need it, or uh, pull a panel up if you need but give it enough time, and I don't know exactly how long, but I would say, you know, a safe bit is at least 24 hours. It's going to become a permanent uh, hold, and and so you don't have to worry about your card, you know, falling apart, and, um, and you know, all of the work to create that light-up card to have it you know, not hold together. So really, really fantastic how, um, how Amanda achieved that. I have no idea, but, um, but I love working with it because of those two properties. And so now that, um, I've got my sentiment embossed, and this is from the clear stamp of the month from, uh, last June. So June of 2023. It's the, it's the, it's the month that had a lot of underwater themed elements. And so I just stamped in white heat and embossed this sentiment. What are you up to? <laughs> I thought that was kind of cute. And I think that's going to, um, to wrap up my card. I thought about maybe adding some coral to the outside, like where my sentiment is. You'll see me audition a couple things out. But ultimately, I think that would have taken away from the underwater scene. I kind of like having it black and 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 very uh all that white space just so that you can really focus because there's so much color and uh, brightness in those fish and literal brightness when you turn the light on that's really concentrated in that uh window and so i i even though i tried to put some things on the outside first it doesn't really make sense because that would mean that some of that ocean life is now inside the submarine with us. <laughs> and so, um, so it didn't make sense, but I think also just visually it, it didn't make sense either. So I just uh, decided to stick with plan A and keep everything nice and simple. So here is a final look at the card. I think it looks great even when it's not lit up. And when you do push the button to light it up, you, you really get um, a fantastic, fun card. Card. So that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this card. And until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Thanks. Bye.